Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play Valhalla. My name is Weasel, and it is the next day. Um, I did not buy anything. Uh, I forgot to read the stuff up, but we're back here. Uh, we're going to start off a new day and going to learn more what happened uh, soon, I hope, uh, in the bank. I'm really curious how that turned out. Oh, I can switch channels. I did not know that. We watch, we protect. Huh. I wanna, okay, that's Ella's rabbit. Anyway. Huh, I didn't expect you today. I wasn't waiting for you to call and say you wouldn't be coming or something. Things at the Apollo Bank are getting ugly, so that means more people will be looking for a drink. <sighs> you can take a break, you know. You're quite the hot worker. And the streets are not exactly safe right now. They've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come with the bar closing soon. I wonder if any bar has used impending closure as a means to getting their employees to work. Seems like the total opposite would happen. Not to mention, I get bored out of my brains in my apartment, so I'd rather come out here anyway. What did you say? Nothing important. Get Olsen back yet? Nope. I wouldn't worry too much about him, though. If you say so. Say, what's this bottle? A bottle of absinthe I had at home. I went to have it appraised, but the guy said that without a label, there's not much value to it. It's still a nice bottle of absinthe, though. I see. Are you going to serve it today? It looks like the absinthe can be detected by the station's database, so it's not con counterfeit. I'll serve it only if customers ask for it. Sounds good. Want me to serve you a glass of it? I'll pass. Absinthe's not my kind of thing. Well then, I'll be in my office. Careful with that thing. Alright. Okay then. Let's do this. Uh, we can we could set some new songs, just to remove a few, and then mix it up like uh, very colorful and see what happens. Oh, I got double digital drive in there. Unbelievable. Time to serve, mix, and change lives! Wait, that's not how it goes. Ah, <sighs> no one here is too retard. Man, I feel lonely without Jill here. I just hope the restlessness in the streets doesn't lead to danger. So weird types coming in here? What? <laughs> okay. I don't know how to do a brain voice. I guess I'm gonna do like a robotic voice. Good evening. Holy shit, that was a record-breaking jinx. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? Let's see. I have a green fairy. God, it's gonna be so obnoxious. I'm sorry, guys. Green fairy? Hello, fairy. Sorry, the absinthe bottle distracted me. Okay. Oh, wait. A blue fairy. Okay. Uh, blue fairy. Oh, she's distracted. I should have gotten like a fern. I would have helped with her distraction anyway. Optional karma train. Gotta pay attention now and mix that stuff. There you go. Bam, blue fairy. Serve. Here you go. Nice, yeah, this is the thing. So, um, how are you gonna... Oh, you can grab stuff. Should have figured as much. You can drink stuff? Annie, I have the same system, Lilim do. Can I ask you something, um, miss... Call me Taylor. Just Taylor. And yes, a cutie like you can ask me anything. Okay, Taylor. You have to be the first person I've met that didn't go, Okay, just Taylor. <laughs> Nah, too easy. You're a brain in a jar, right? I'm sure not a hologram of that, I'm sure. Yep, I'm a bona fide human brain in a jar. So how, why, what? Does my handsomeness make you speechless? You're not something a girl sees every day, and that's saying quite a bit in these parts. Fear not, for I have a speech prepared for these situations. A speech? You're seeing one of the five great living bottled brains of the world. We are brains living in the conditions that allow us to exist as any other humanoid creature. All while computers in our jar skin our activities. In a slow but steady many, we are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. I'm guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question too many times, huh? Not out of expiration or something like that, mind you. I just wanted to have something thoughtful prepared. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Sure. What brings one of your world's five brains and jars to the place, to this place, though? Oh, I'm from around here, actually. I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in quite a bit of time. Have you come here before? Sadly, no. Otherwise, I'd remember a cute face like yours. Jesus, the brain is hitting on me. Speaking of which, can I have your name? Um, it's Jill. Jill, yeah, that's quite a really cute name. Thank you. Say, weren't you scared of going outside today? What with the commotion and all? I didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Oh, good point. Yeah, you're right. It's gonna take more than cryptic but ominous news to stop me. You're awfully energetic. Did you know that? Sorry, does that bother you? No, not at all. Just that I figured a brain in a jar wouldn't be so happy. 
While I was alive, my body got to a point where there wasn't much I could do. This new state of existence allows me to accomplish more than I could ever before. Plus, I'm doing something that'll help people in the long run. Wouldn't you be happy? I wonder. Do you want to make me happy, Jill? Depends on what it takes. Don't worry, just give me a beer. <laughs> All right then, yeah, I'll make you a beer. Ah, oh, fuck, I just can't ask what the water was. That looked very unprofessional. It's a beer, Jill. Get your shit together. Here, beer. It's pretty easy to do. One of those, two of those, one part of Delta, two Flanergite, and four Commentrain. Pretty straight up stuff, and it's gonna be mixed. Done. Beer. Here, beer. Ah, yes, no matter what happens, beer always good. Hey, Taylor, may I ask you something a bit more indiscreet? You can ask anything you want. Well, you had your other body. Were you male or female? Hmm, that's actually quite the question. Especially considering I don't really know the answer either. You don't? I mean, I remember when it was Taylor. In fact, I remember every detail of my life, but the one thing that's a bit blurry. Blurry? Yeah, the team that put me here said that it might be a side effect of the whole process. But my family and friends say that even in life, I didn't put too much thought into question about gender. So in the end, we're back to square one. Wait, didn't, don't you have pics or anything else? To be honest, I've chosen not to look too deeply into my old identity. Partly because I'm happier in this ambiguous state. But also because I have this gut feeling. I'm not psychologically prepared to see what it looked like. I don't know. I feel like if I do, I might crumble. Damn. Just out of curiosity, in a third person scenario, how should one refer to you? By my name. I guess that makes sense. If you absolutely need to use pronouns, refer to me like you'd refer to any other house appliance, a TV, or something like that. And it. Are you okay with that? In the end, even if I can't speak, I'm just an object. That's actually something I've internalized a long time ago, even with my original body. I see. If that doesn't make you comfortable, feel free to use neutral pronouns. To be honest, you can refer to me however you want. I don't really pay mind to that. But this isn't about what makes me comfortable. You know what the downside to this body is? I can get drunk. If you want to call that a downside. If you wanted to drink alcohol for the taste, there are many alternatives. Drunkenness is part of the whole experience. Why though? Lone kid get drunk with no problem. Yeah, but in their case, their brains are computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed to their bodies. Depending on the model, their drunk subroutine might throw in a different behavior cycle even. Oh, the voice is getting really weird. This is hard. And it's hard to get drunk when the whole point of you being in a jar is figuring out exactly how you work. Hmm, yeah, you're right. Hey, Jill. Oh, Alma. Just... Oh, Alma? Where is the courtesy one would expect from a plebeian staff bar? Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? Happy? Not when you put it that way. Why, hello there, beautiful. <laughs> you hurt my feelings with that, darling. Sorry, I didn't see talking disembodied brains every day. I mean, I did work a summer in little maintenance, but even then, those were talking heads. Oh, don't worry about it. At least you're not running or fainting. Your name was Alma, right? I'm Taylor. Nice to meet you, Taylor. Say, Alma, can I buy you a drink? Sorry, I only date people who are at least 50% organic and I have at least one face. Hmm, I know just what to strive for then. Just kidding, I'd make me happy to make you happy by buying you a drink. Does that bother you? I guess if Chill's the bartender, I don't have a problem with that. Awesome, I'll pay for your next drink then. What will you have? I'll have a cobalt velvet. And you, Taylor? I'm fine, actually. You're gonna have to drink alone? I don't wanna drink that much. Okay, then. Uh, a velvet cobalt or something. Velvet, vel or cobalt, velvet. Cobalt velvet, there you go. Never made that, all right. Two Adelheid, three Flannergite. Five Karma Drink, got you covered. Bam, uh, all on the rocks and mixed. Cool, your drink. Hope you enjoy it. You know, you've been nicer to me these past minutes than at least three guys have been in the last year. Judging from the way you two talk, I'm guessing you've been in client here for a while now, right? Only for a half a year or so, if memory serves right. Really? One would think it's been longer. Uh, it feels like it has been longer. Shut up. You love me, and you know it. Oh, look at that face. So, you just started coming here, and that was it? Well, the first time I came here, the other guy, speaking of which, where's Pablo? Jillian. Archimedes. Dunno, adventuring or something. Anyways, the other guy served me the first time I came here. Nothing unusual here. 
The next time I showed up, Chill here was the one serving, and then, I don't know, I felt like she just gets me. There's this chemistry, we click. We click, she says. The fact that I feel more chemistry with her than with many other people is kind of sad, though. Man, do we get to, like, like date all of these ladies? It's always good to see a nice friendship. Sadly, it's getting late, and I gotta go. I'll leave you two lovely ladies alone. See ya. Bye. Please come again. That tailor sure was nice. A bit weird at first, though. Apparently one of the five brains being studied by scientists or something. Here's a summary of it in this pamphlet. Let's see. Oh yeah, I've heard of them before. Can't believe I've actually met one. Say, Alma, how many people are in your family? Just curious. Well, aside from my mom and dad, we're five si uh, four sisters and one brother. Funnily enough, we all have names that start with the first five letters in the alphabet. So you're the eldest one? No, I'm actually the middle kid. You're the middle kid, but your name starts with an A? Don't think too much about it. I never said the order reflected our ages. My sister called us the eldest one, then there's Diana just before me. Then comes Eva, and at the bottom lies Billy. <clears throat> Sorry, the youngest one is Bernardo. You've never been alone, I'm guessing. Can't complain about that, I guess. It helps that we were never five in the same house. By the time Evita and Bernie were born, Diana and Carlotta had already been moved. Speaking of family, today I came because I need a break from everything that's been going on with them. Do you live with them? No, but Evita and Bernie do. Not to mention I visit them almost every day. Anyway, my second eldest sister, Diana, just separated from her husband. It's not been a week, but she's been already got some other guy in her bed. She left her kid with her husband's parents and pretty much forgot about them. Never mind the fact that they need to go to school and all that. Damn. Diana's life has always been messy, but these days she's really making it big. She wants time for herself to live her life. She didn't think about that when she married the guy at 20. She didn't think about that when marrying a guy she had only known for like three months. You should take your own advice. Hey, I'd never marry someone who could catch my attention so quickly, okay? Sure, there was that one time when it almost happened, but I blamed the damn stadium kiss cam. Kiss cam? I was going out with my guy, with a guy a little, my little sister introduced me. Seems it was her friend's brother or something. We went out a couple of times and he invited me to a basketball game. The mood was nice, but then later the kiss cam focused on us. Instead of kissing me, he proposed. I almost got caught in the mood and accepted. Huh. So I take you, you rejected him in a stadium on the fucking kiss cam? We went out for like three weeks. I don't know, maybe he wanted to get in my pants with the old sex on the wedding night line. But I honest to God can't understand why he thought it would be a good idea. And that sounds too convoluted, you know, proposing and waiting for the wedding night just for sex? Never underestimate the lengths a man was willing to go f to get into their bed. I've seen more convoluted plots over the years. I'm feeling tempted to ask, but I'll pass. Want anything else? Hmm, what's that bottle? Some bottle of absinthe I found at home. It's unlabeled, so it's not that much valuable. Do you know how to serve it? I'd usually need some kind of spoon to purge a cube of sugar. But the station does it all for me. Do you want some absinthe then? Sure, let's try it. Go to the bottle drinks tab and drag it to the shaker before mixing. Okay, puke green fairy. <laughs> all right, let's mix it and absinthe. There you go. Careful, it's a strong drink. I'll tell you if it's strong or not. And indeed, it is. Holy shit. Are you okay? Uh, I'll be fine, I had worse in college. What did you do in college, by the way? Jaeger bombs, giant taco pizzas, a cute student teacher. We all did a cute student teacher at some point. I'm talking about studies, woman. I know, I know, I'm a computer engineer dropout. Dropout? I was getting fed up with the whole make programs for other people thing. I see. All right, now my turn to ask questions. About what? What kind of family is your family? Well, I'm an only child. My mom and dad split amicably. Amicably, I can't talk, I swear. My mom is a violinist, so she was always away from home with the orchestra. I spent most of my time with my dad, my aunt, and my grandpa. Aside from that, I'd say my childhood was quite uneventful. Huh. Didn't you get something like your mom's artistic vein or something? I played the violin until I was around 16, I think. What made you stop? I don't know, I just kinda said, that's it one day and stopped. Oh man, I'm mixing up the voices. What about cousins or the rest of your family? I see very little of them actually. 
Mainly because my dad moved away from most of them. Most of our mom's family live in France to boot. So, your mom's French? Yep. Can you speak French? I have no idea what that... I, I don't even... Can't, I don't even know. Oh, what does that mean? Rubbish? I don't know. I can't speak French. <laughs> I did try, though, but college started and I stopped taking classes. Funny thing, I actually have a cousin from my mom's side that lives close by. But you'll be hard-pressed to make him spot him in a crowd. You're kind of lucky, you know. All of my mom's side of the family lives here. The chances of me meeting someone I'm related to on the street are ridiculously high. But yeah, that's the prime of my family. Nothing too interesting, sadly. Your mom's a French violinist, and you call that uninteresting? I'm wondering if your family has ever made a fuss about you being a hacker. Hacker makes it sound too exotic. It's like if I called you a mixologist. Please don't ever. Sounds like something someone would make bartender sound sophisticated. See? I mean, hacker is a good way to summarize it, but it's not the best. I'm a security consultant. People want to find flaws. Oh, my bad. People want to find flaws in the security of their systems, and I do my best to pinpoint where it breaks. Be Glitch City or anywhere else in the world, they need security, and I'm their woman. You've told quite a few stories about cracking into databases to retrieve info like some sort of mercenary, though. That doesn't change the fact that hacker is not the best term to use. It makes the whole thing sound legal when it's actually an honest job. Didn't you tell me once you secured some incriminating pictures from a guy's cell phone? A mostly honest job. Sheesh. What makes you become a hacker, by the way? I've always been a sucker for puzzles. Even as a kid, I've always had a Sudoku across with me. But at some point, they started feeling kinda samey. So, when I started college, I took a course on system security. It fell for the kind of puzzle I was looking for. I mean, there are all kinds of things involved in breaching net security. You need to attack the stuff from different angles. And it's sometimes that always evolving. The whole point of everything is to strengthen security. Every time you think you've got the gist of it, they change everything. So it's kind of like an always evolving puzzle. A puzzle I help make harder at that. Huh, I didn't think about it that way. It is less action-y than what movies make it up to be, though. No real-time frantic typing, nothing like that. Still, seeing my code break through something, it's an amazing feeling. Will you have anything else? Give me something non-alcoholic. I want to play it safe with the whole Epsom thing. Alright, uh, something non-alcoholic. Um, by type. Um, maybe girly? Uh, Sugar Rush. Alright, two Adelheid, one part of Daltara. And that's it, all mixed. Bam. Sweet, light and fruity, as girly as it gets. Here. I hope you haven't spiced up this one. Alma, please. Say, Jill, what's the worst that could happen if you don't get your drinks right? Well, people have the right to not give me money. If they don't pay for it, I don't get my bonus. No bonus means that's money and no tips, which doesn't help because I have to pay bills. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I can see that. Oh, I see. Do you have to make an effort to pay your bills? Nope. You have no idea how much I hate you right now. Well, my job pays pretty well, and I'm not the kind to spend too much things on other than food and belts. Maybe maintenance on my hands and new equipment, but aside from that... Oh, I know! If you have trouble with your belts, why not live with me? Aw, we could be roommates. Dunno. Moving my stuff through the stairs because the elevator's broken. Having to move my liquor collection. Never mind the fact that my cats are shut in that got very upset the one time I moved some furniture around. The idea of just moving gives me a headache. You shouldn't take things so seriously when I say them, you know? No, I would totally move in with her. I don't, but I thought about it before. Now, I need some air. I'm gonna take my break. You wanna come? Are you inviting me to the back of the bar? You should invite me to dinner first. Every minute you waste making jokes is time taken for my break. Fine, let's go. Boss, I'm taking my break. Call me if anyone comes in. Sure, sure. All right, that concludes it for this episode of Valhalla. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. I'm Weasel. I'm out, and I hope to see you around. Bye-bye!